my, micro ah, my microphone's on now. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I guess I haven't really been instructed in how to click the slides further, but I'm going to make a go at it. Um, I am Bettina Rubek Slater. I'm a co-founder of a startup. Um, we started four years ago uh, with a mission to um, help everybody who was in IoT and developing products that uh, connect to the internet. Um, it's been a journey, um, a journey of lots of learning, but also lots of successes and uh, a great reception in a market that was uh, right for the type of solutions that we have put in the market today. So I'm not going to pitch so much around our portfolio and what we've done. We've had a look at um, some market data um, how many of you have been in IoT or technology for more than 10 years? Hands up. Okay. You'd be familiar with this statement then. 50 billion connected devices by 2020. Um, I saw this uh, in 2010. It was the then CEO of um, a very well-known company called Ericsson, uh, who predicted that we would have so many devices connected by this year, and we've arrived. Um, a year later, Cisco jumped on the bandwagon and made the same prediction, which is, um, it was at the time quite surprising. Um, fast forward six years, Gartner came to a conclusion that we would have 20 billion connected devices, so a little bit less. And as my children often say, are we there yet? Um, do you think we're there yet, anyone? <laughs> The market is growing. Uh, the good news is it's growing very, very fast, but we're not there yet. We're at about 8 billion connected devices, and some of those are not what we would uh, consider IoT or business-to-business -business IoT. Um, my focus today is on LP1 and the technologies that go into um, delivering those networks and services. And um, what we think will happen in 2025 is that we'll have about 2 billion connected devices on LP1. Um, the good news is, as I said, the market is growing. Uh, the analyst communities are a little bit in dispute as to how much and where we are today, but it's around uh, the 150 to 250 million devices uh, connected with the traditional LP1 technologies that we, we see today, LoRa, Sigfox, uh, CATM1, and NB-IoT. Um, another report uh, that we read up on um, from uh, the IoT analytics tells us that the market is growing at over 100%, and that Asia Pacific is one of the largest adopters of uh, NB-IoT, um, not NB-IoT, LP1 technologies. Um, and that utilities remains a strong market for everything we're doing in LP1. Um, we talk about LoRa, Sigfox, and um, uh, NBIoT and CATM1 as the 92% uh, of all um, LP1 technologies in the market today, which is phenomenal. There are a number of other technologies like um, Zigbee and some other on license spectrum, but the majority is uh, within the technologies that we're seeing here. Um, and as I said, Asia Pac is driving a lot of this, and a lot of that is in BIOT in China. Um, and they are going for both NBIOT, but also the non-cellular like LoRa and Sigfox. Smart metering will account for about 20 to 30% of all devices that are rolling out, and that goes across both cellular and um, the unlicensed spectrum around LP1. Smart metering, so it's electricity, gas, and water. So if you're doing uh, IoT projects, the recommendation is that um, this is a really strong area for you to look into. And the network's marathon. I said this was a marathon. It's a race. Um, is it a race? When we started PyCom, the question we often got was, um, which technology should I bet on? Who's going to win the race? And um, we often said, do you have to make a bet? Uh, could we not make uh, multi-network modules that allow people to start their development without actually looking at what they end up with as um, the end solution in their products? 
And the answer to that is, of course, yes, they're all going to coexist. And even though we will have some that are a little bit more prolific in some areas and less in others, we still believe that multi-network is the way to go. The networks need each other. They need to connect. Uh, they need to coexist. Sorry, I went backwards. They need to coexist. And um, if you adopt an, a strategy around multi-network, you will eventually have um, a much more resilient and redundant, redundant approach to um, getting connected. How many networks are up and running today? Sigfox in 70 countries, um, they're still rolling out and doing well. We've got LoRaWAN rolling out in, well, already present in 143 countries, and that's up in 2019 to 143 from 100 in 2018. So they've done really well on the LoRa front. Um, NBIOT and LTM are also rolling out less quickly. Uh, 127 commercial networks available, most of which are NBIOT, but um, CATM1 are following very quickly behind. Some notable deployments. Um, we have gas meters in Japan rolling out with Sigfox, and they also have a very big deployment with DHL on roll cages. Um, LoRa in France um, has been rolled out with 400,000 smart meters and are also looking at another three million on top of that. Um, in addition, in Brazil, we have Max Tracks rolling out a million smart, meter, um, smart trackers on cars. And on NBIOT and CATM1, of course, China again, electric bikes, one million units uh, rolled out. And in Sweden, we have two million smart meters. So they're all rolling out. Uh, in big volume and with some very big use cases that everybody can leverage and learn from. As I said, we believe in coexistence of multi-network at device level. It gives redundancy and resiliency to any solution that customers are rolling out. And the other thing I want to say, which addresses one of the questions we often get from investors and people in our industry is, why are you doing hardware? Why aren't you doing a platform or a... Um, something that is a SaaS model. Um, hardware still accounts for a lot of the revenue and the, um, the value in, or the perceived value in this industry. And uh, we believe that uh, hardware is hard, it's very hard to make it easy, but if we can do it, we can really accelerate um, the journey for the developers that we're working with and for. So, um, seven to nine billion things by the end of 2020. Um, are we going to get there? To get there, we must accelerate. And one of the reasons we set PyCom up, as I said, was to give developers the tools uh, to do IoT projects, to get their products connected to the internet quickly. Um, we looked at market data in 2015 when we set up. I'd been working with analysts for years, and um, I kept asking myself, how can we get there? We can't unless we help people remove barriers. So um, that's what we set out to do. Um, I have a long history in technology and technology marketing. Uh, in my past, I worked with Motorola. It took 36 months to get a radio product to market. 36 months. That's a lot of engineering time. It's a lot of money. Um, they weren't much better on the cellular front. It would take them about 24 months to get a product to market. And I'm looking here at the Razor, which I was inter um, inter um, involved in. <laughs> I then joined um, um, a consumer electronics company. It was a startup. It also took 18 months to get that product to market. And at the time, uh, by the time we got to market, we'd run out of steam and cash, um, which is often the case for, for development programs. I then joined an M, you know, and you could say, well, maybe time and the lag follows her. I assure you it was nothing to do with me. Um, but we worked with a very well-known um, lawn and garden company. Um, they were launching a, a lawnmower. It took them 24 months, and they thought, well, we're just going to need one firmware update per year, per product. They had 36 in the first month. Um, 
Another company we worked with was a coffee machine vending company. They also thought it was going to be really easy, but when you look into the back of a, a vending machine for coffee, um, it has about 74 sensors in there, and it took them 22 months to roll something out that had a complete spaghetti junction of routers and lines and um, cables in the back. And we looked at that and thought, we can do this better. We can make hardware easier for these companies to roll out. And um, you know, doing an analysis of what we would need to do, we looked at what are the challenges they have. And I'm listing some very big companies here, but actually when you look at IoT as a market, um, there are a lot of SMEs, and some of you may be from some of those companies. There are a lot of SMEs who are trying to get access to parts and support from the big manufacturers and can't get there. Um, the approach at the time we wrote PyCom out was also, let's go with one network. Cellular accounted for the vast majority of uh, connections and, and um, connected products when, when we started. Um, no one really had thought of doing multi-network. We had one CTO tell us, why would you build cost into a product um, at the hardware level? But we decided to go ahead and um, launch with LoRa, as some of you may know. Um, the other thing that uh, was often the problem was the proof of concept wasn't really fit for scale. They'd start with Arduino or Raspberry Pis, they'd go and do a pilot, and then they'd have to go back to the drawing board to do the real thing. Um, so we wanted something that was scalable, and in addition to that, often uh, companies would lock um, the hardware into a cloud platform to achieve that SaaS model I talked about earlier. And all of this was contributing to very long time to market for companies. So enter PyCom. I set it up in 2015 with my co-founder, Fred, who's here. And um, we were on a mission to create a platform that would enable and inspire everyone to be an inventor, removing all the barriers, and also adding um, additional benefits like cost reduction and, and scale. Um, we have achieved that. We have an IoT platform that goes from hardware through uh, a, a device management platform. We're adding network management to that. And um, we offer uh, services around um, manufacturing and development of products in that platform. Um, and this is all about helping developers win the race, the race that is I start a project and I need to move to scale fairly quickly because no one, even in large organizations, have a huge budget. So the quicker we can remove the barriers and get to market with something that's connected to the internet, the quicker the revenue comes that sustains a business or a business unit. Um, our experience with LP1 has been uh, one of starting with Laura and then moving gradually into the cellular space. So Laura was the first product we launched with the Lopi, and um, hence what you can't see here, which I can see because it's gray. Apologies for that. Um, but what we're getting to now is about 50-50 on the products we're shipping. So 50% um, Laura Sigfox and 50% cellular. And of course, this is driven by the fact that the cellular networks are now rolling out in great scale. But networking is still complex, and developing products and getting them to market are still too long, and we need to do more, both as a company and as an industry, to help um, get more of these things connected to the, the internet. Um, for inventors, it's a race for them. It's not necessarily about whether they use LoRa, Sigfox, or Cellular. It's about how they win their own race, getting to market within a, a time frame and budget that is achievable. We need to help them run faster to win. And that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Bettina, and great how also you used past experience to innovate current processes in your yep. company, as it sounds like.
Um, I'm curious, I've briefly mentioned already the hackathons and you already underlined the importance of how open things are. Yes. Um, what role do hackathons play for you guys? Because you organize a lot of them. We do. We had about um, 15 events last year and they were scattered all over the world. So we made sure that we, uh, I think we had about five in each region. Um, and it was an opportunity for us as a team to meet our community. Our community is now 450,000 uh, developers. Um, it's an opportunity to learn really what their challenges still are. Of course, we give them a kit and they get up and running and they walk away with a connected product. Um, but really, as a, as a management team, we, and, and as a development team, we learn what yeah. their challenges still are, their application areas, and, and um, such like. Yeah. And for them, of course, it's an opportunity to meet us and influence yeah. our it's roadmap. A, it's a win-win. Yeah. Yes. OK, very good. Are there any questions for Bettina? No, then I'd like to thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And, Thanks um, for joining me. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. And applause for Bettina.